you know, this is a time where we have to allow ourselves to have the emotions that we're having and many emotions throughout the last couple of weeks and building up, I've been having and, and allowing ourselves. And, and I love the song that it's inviting us to listen, to remember about love, to remember that love is what it is. We get to release our, our story. Getting to the place of love is all that there is because we have these principles that we use quite a bit and we throw them out. Love is all there is. Love heals all. Love is it. And it's a healer. We have those principles that we throw out all the time. But how do we get there? That's a bigger question. I believe that's a journey of spirituality. How do we get to know and to stand in that principle? That love is the only power that there is. Love is all that there is. God is love. God is love. And we, we, we have to acknowledge that there is a process of actually getting there. I want to read to you two quotes. And this one is by Martin Luther King. And it says that darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. I want to get to that place. But I got to be honest with you, I have not been there throughout the past couple of weeks. I've been on a myriad up and down. I've cried. I've yelled. I've screamed. I've been in anger. I've been in fear. I have not felt safe. And yet there's been times where I felt that God is all there, there is. Throughout it, I've kept my practice as much as I could in, in, in connection with that. But I want to read this part of this, and, and this is where this, this talk actually comes from today. So Howard Thurman has a very famous, if you don't know Howard Thurman, please get in, 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 in touch with his writings and who he was as a teacher and who he is still as a teacher. And he wrote a beautiful poem called, I Want to Be More Loving in My Heart. I'm not going to read the whole poem, but I'm going to read part of it because this is a very important indicator of where I'm at. And it says, and he writes, often there are good and significant reasons for it experiencing what seems to be a clean and direct resentment. Again and again, I find it hard to hold in check the sharp retorts, the biting comebacks, when it seems that someone has done violence to my self-esteem or self-respect and decent regard. How natural it is to seem to give as good as I get to take nothing lying down and to announce to all and sun dry in a thousand ways that no one can run over me and get away with it. All this is a part of the thicket in which my heart gets caught up again and again. Deep within me, I want to be more loving in my heart. To glow with the warmth that will take the chill off the room, which I share with those who lives touch mine in the traffic of my goings and comings. I want to be more loving in my heart. So that first part really sets me up to speak about what I want to speak about today. I want to be more loving in my heart, but then I remember Trayvon Martin. I want to be more loving in my heart, but then I remember Eric Gardner, who was breaking up a fight when he was killed. I want to be more loving in my heart when I remember Ezil Ford was walking in his neighborhood. I want to be more loving when I remember Michelle Cousseau, Tanisha Anderson, Tamir Wright. I want to be more loving when I remember Natasha McKenna, Walter Scott. Betty Jones, Philando Castile. I want to be more loving in my heart when I remember Eric Reason. When I want to be more loving when I remember Ahmaud Aubrey, a jogger, and I'm a jogger. I want to be more loving in my heart, but then I remember George Floyd. How do I get there? And this is a real conversation we gotta have. We have not healed our nation or our world on the travesty of, of racism that comes from slavery. We have not had this honest conversation. 
This is what tomorrow's healing thing is all about. And I just got a notice that it was sold out, but we knew that it was going to be sold out. We were going to add on more. So be on the lookout for that. But this is why we're having these conversations. These are the things that we've neglected to really speak in our spiritual community. We have an opportunity to grow from these incidents we've seen, that we've experienced. We have to begin to acknowledge our own space of racism and where I've allowed racism to happen in my own life, where I have decolorized myself so I can feel more acceptable in a setting of non-people of color. I've done it. I played myself down. I, the way I, I speak or what I dress or, or what I do in, in a predominantly white area I work in, I have decolorized myself. That is a form of self-hate that comes from the legacy of slavery, that I was not willing to embrace my, my, my slave ancestors. And look at the beauty of this. In tragedy, we can see the beauty. I'm shifting that, I'm changing that. And it starts with me. Here's the thing, I, I love that everyone's been reaching out to me and I had friends online going, I feel horrified, these are my white friends. I feel horrified. And thank you. Thank you for the solidarity because this is what we're calling for. But my response is, what are you sorry for? What are you feeling awful for? This is a place that we all have to take responsibility for this because change begins at home. We must become the transformation that we want to see, that we want to experience. We must become that. So I get to look in my own life where I've allowed racist comments. You know that statement that we always, I don't mean to be racist, but, and then we hear the joke. I've allowed that to happen. Not just again to, towards black people, but how about, I don't mean to be sexist when, I, when you hear it in your workplace to women. I don't mean to be racist when, when a black person say it to about a white person. Racism is racism. It's a low vibration frequency. But if we want to up the vibration, we got to get real. We got to have these conversations. We got to talk about this. We got to have those uncomfortable conversations. My work here as a minister is not to make you feel comfortable. It's for, to bring up stuff so you can have your own transformation. That's what my calling is here. That's why I'm here. And yes, I am still feeling this. And yes, I must still do my work. So I want to talk to you about how do we get to that place of love is everything. I have four things I've been doing in my own spiritual work around this time and seeing a public lynching that happened with George Floyd. Yeah, we got to get honest with this. This is what we saw. And I knew that in that moment I saw it, all this energy came up and I said, okay, but how do I get back to love is everything? How do I get back to the place where I know that I live in? So four steps that we got to do. Number one, we got to feel it. I got to own my feelings. I got to feel this. And here's, here's what I do know that I learned. Uh, I come from an age where, where we got whoopings. And y'all know that we didn't always have this, you know, don't whip your kids thing. I, I came from a place that it, it was whooping time. And I remember my stepfather was beating me with a belt. It, it, was, it was a terrible thing and it happens, a real thing. And he said to me, you better not cry. He used to say that to me all the time. As he's beating me, you better not cry because I don't want to see you get ran over. I want to make you strong as a man. So I learned how not to feel. I learned it. My mother always say, don't let him see you cry, son. Don't let him see you cry. I learned how not to show the feelings and not to have the feelings. But the first thing we gotta do is we gotta feel it. And then we get to deal with it. And how do we deal with it? I am feeling angry, contracted. I'm feeling less than, I am not feeling connected to God. Why? I get to deal with it because I saw a lynching on TV. I've lived racism all my life. I'm a gay man who feels marginalized. These are the reasons why I feel it. And, 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 and get honest with that. So we feel it and then we deal with it. And then we know the practices of healing, but if we're not willing to feel it and deal, it, deal with it, we're not gonna get to the healing. And the healing is to do what I normally do. When things happen, I say, God, what's going on here? What is happening? And then I pray. 
And then I call my practitioner and I call my friends and other ministers and they have a talk. And then I meditate and then I go work out. So these are all the things that we can do to bring us back to healing. And I can tell you there's moments of, yes, I'm going back to healing. There's moments I'm back into the energy of this life right now. But once we feel it, we deal with it, and we begin to heal with it, then we reveal. Then the revelation happens. The revelation happens is, oh, God is still here. God is still my life. I am still living and moving, have my beingness in God. And if I don't feel it, I go back to the beginning. I got to feel it, deal with it, heal it, reveal it. Those are the things that we got to be working on right now. And I say we have to because this is not a black issue. This is not a, 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 a black and white thing. Or, or This is a global thing. This is a calling. It is an opportunity for us to stand up and to be better as a globe, as a people. This is our opportunity to do this. But we've got to have these very honest, hurtful conversations right now. And today, you know, I, I, I'm in a little bit of fatigue because I've been speaking about this. I've been on many podcasts talking about the incidents that's happened and how we get back to it. I talk on my own podcast. I did, you know, guided meditations for Inside Timer. I did a healing thing with, with UC Dominguez Hills. I got to facilitate healing on Friday. So I'm in a little bit of, of, of fatigue around this. But we got to continue to do this work. It's not time for us to be on the sidelines. So I'm going to close you with this. You know I love an acronym. And here's our acronym is CARES. And CARES is an acronym I've created to, to help clients and to, to, to speak. And I speak on this all the time. And, and, and CARES stands for this. Connection, action, remember, empowerment, and self-love. And this is part of the, the healing process. Connection. I believe that we have racism and people are stepping out and, and, and talking and, and, and doing and hurting others because they do not remember or they've never known their connection to God. I really believe that. I believe that when someone has the, their neck on your, your, their knee on your neck, they have forgotten that we're one in spirit. So we have to go back to the connection. If you cut my heart open and I cut your heart open, it's gonna bleed the same way. We are connected. We are connected beyond this physical because this is what is stopping us from being connected. We are connected by spirit. So connection is where we gotta go back to. A is action. See. If you want to transform your life, you can sit, you can treat, you can pray, you can do everything else. You can have a mindful thinking and sit there on the couch and you will never transform if you're not willing to get into action. And here's our action. Some of us are called to be on the front lines. Thank you, Craig, for sharing that with me this morning. I've been watching all the, all the, the demonstrations and I'm seeing so many inclusivity of, of, of marches. There's not just black people, it's not just, it's everybody, we're marching together. Thank you for sharing that. Action is happening right now. You might not be on the front lines and I can tell you, I, I'm not called to be on the front lines right now, I'm protesting through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm doing my protest the way I'm called to do it. We all have an action plan, it's a call to action. What is your call to action? I can't tell you that, you have to decide. Some people are gonna sit and pray. Hallelujah, sit and pray because we need prayer. But what is your call to action? Remember, we must begin to remember that healing can happen. Oneness, I think these incidents puts us in a place of forgetting because we get caught up in our energy and the vibration. We wanna do something, but we gotta remember, where are we doing it from? A place of love, because we have an intention to see a better place. So everything we do from action, we have to remember love. We have to remember love. We have to remember love. And I keep coming back to that, because my energy and my vibration will take me to a place of, I'm not loved, so I need to get out and do something. But remember, I am love. I am supported by you all. My classmates, I'm remembering love. And the truth is, once I remember that, I'm empowered. I'm empowered to move with right action. That's one of the principles we study in, in, in our New Thought community, right action. 
We're taking right action. We are empowered. We're no longer in fear of someone taking their knee and putting it on our necks. We're no longer in fear of racism continuing. We're no longer in fear. And yes, we're gonna go back and forth from this feeling of fear to being empowered. But the truth and the honest is we have the power to change. We have the power to be the change we wanna see. We have that power. And then the last thing is self-love, self-care. The healing part is that if I'm not willing to have this conversation with myself, I'm not loving myself. If I'm not willing to talk about slavery, I am always gonna deny it ever happened and it's never gonna heal. It happened y'all, it's real. And I am living proof of it that has not been healed. So I'm willing to be in a place of self care so I can heal the energetic cord of what is happening and what has happened before. So I've been asking this question on, on Facebook and, and Instagram this morning, and, and, and I really want to hear this from you all. And my question is, are you hopeful? Are you hopeful? Because I am. I am. I'm not denying that I'm having a lot of energy around this. I'm crying all the time. But I'm hopeful. So as we go into our breakout rooms, that's the question I'm gonna ask you. Are you hopeful? Here's what I do know that we need to begin to inspire each other with hope. We need to say, yes, I'm hopeful because of this. Thank you, Craig, again. And, and, and everyone who shared with me already, why are you hopeful? I wanna hear that from you. It is time that we do not look to the government for our hope, we look to each other. We don't look to, to, to something outside of our communities, we, inspire each other. We need to speak it. 